Hello friends, welcome to the session on microcontroller unit 8051. In this session, we'll be discussing about 8051 assembly language program examples. In this session, we will see some more assembly language programs on the variety of problems. Friends, as you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel and do subscribe to the channel to see many other educational videos on the various topics of the subjects of electronics and computer science. So let us start the session with the question what we mean by assembly language program. We know that 8051 is a microcontroller unit and this microcontroller unit has lot many instructions. These instructions can be classified into different categories such as data transfer, arithmetic, logical, branching, subroutine, and bit manipulation instructions. By using these instructions, we can write assembly language programs. So assembly language program will consist of a sequence of statements, and these statements are sequentially executed one after the other. And the purpose, there is a purpose for every assembly language program so that we can get some operation to be done by the microcontroller unit. 8051 assembly language program will consist of two sections. The first section is being called as the assembly language program and another section is being called as an assembler. So assembler will consist of different directives as we have already seen it in our earlier session. The directives such as ORG, equivalence, set, DB and end. These are the most popular directives that are being used in the assembly language programs for 8051 microcontroller unit. And we know that whenever we write any instruction in the assembly language program, then the instruction will have a specific syntax and the syntax will be labeled followed by colon, then of code, then operand, and then a semicolon. And then we can write a comment. So label is just nothing but the symbolic address of the instruction. So any name can be given uh, as a label to the instruction. Of code, you can say it is a symbolic representation of the operation. So we can make the use of English words such as move, add, subtract as the of code. So those of codes that we have already seen in the discussion of the different types of instructions for the assembly for the microcontroller unit. Then there is an operand, so it will specify the where the action is to be performed. So, for example, when we write the instructions such as move a comma four zero h, then the data four zero h will be transferred or will be copied into the accumulator a. We uh, many times write comments in the assembly language programs. So comments are useful for the programmer because they will describe the purpose of the instruction. So every comment has to begin with a semicolon. And always one has to remember that the comment cannot generate any machine code. So now go for the discussion for the first problem. The first problem of today's session is the multiplication of the two numbers. Suppose we have been given two hexadecimal numbers and we want to multiply them and we want to obtain the result of multiplication. So this can be the simple assembly language program for the multiplication of the two numbers. Initially, we will set the program counter to 0000, 0, 0, 0 by using this instruction ORG 0000H. Then we will load the first number 20 into the accumulator by using the instruction move a comma hash 20. Then we will load the second number into the register B by using this instruction move B comma hash 21H. Then for multiplication, there is an instruction MUL AB. So the multiplication of the two numbers will take place and the result will be in the accumulator A. So this result has to be moved to the location 52 by using this instruction move 52 H comma A. So the least significant byte of the result will be moved to the location 52. Then we will save the most significant byte of the result to the location 53 by using this instruction move 53 H comma B because we know that the most significant byte of the multiplication will be in the register B. And then finally, we will end the program by making the use of end directive. So whenever uh, you type this program, 
in the text editor window of any 8051 simulator. And if it is correctly typed, then you can click on this run button in order to execute it. So after the execution, one can easily observe that in the location 52 and 53, you will get the result. And the result will be the location 52 will consist of 20H and the location 53 will consist of 04H. Now let us go for the division of the two numbers. Suppose we want to divide the two numbers. So this is an assembly language program. Initially, we will set the program counter to 0000. Then we will load the number 23 into the accumulator by using this instruction, move a comma hash 23 h. Then we will load the next number 05 into the register B by using this instruction, move B comma hash 05 h. Then we will divide a by b by using this instruction d i v a b then the quotient of the result will be moved to the location 52 by using this instruction move 52 h comma a and then we will set or we will save the remainder of the result to the location 53 by using this instruction move 53 h comma b because the remainder will be in the register b and the quotient will be in the register a so when you type this program and when you execute it, then after the execution, one can easily observe that we will get the result 52H will be equal to 07H and 53H will be equal to 00H. So when you divide this number to three hexadecimal by using a number 05 hexadecimal, then you will get the result equal to 07 because two three hexadecimal is just nothing but 35 decimal. Now let us go for another problem. This is the ones and twos complements of the number. Frequently, we require to obtain the ones complement and twos complement of the numbers. So the assembly language program for this problem is shown in this window, where one can obviously observe that we can set the program counter to 0000 by using this instruction ORG 0000. Then we will load the number Two, three into the accumulator by using this instruction move a comma hash two three h then we will take its ones complement by using this instruction cpla then we will save this ones complement into the location 52 h by using this instruction move 52 h comma a then we will add 0 1 into the accumulator to obtain its twos complement by using this instruction add a comma hash 01H. And then we will save this two's complement into the location 53H. And then finally, we will end the assembly language program. So when you type this program by using 8051 simulator, and when you execute it, then you will find that you will get the result in the location 52H is equal to BCH and 53H is equal to DDH. Now let us write down some program for OR and and XOR operations. So these are the logical operations. So initially we will set the program counter to 0000. Then we will load the number 23H into the accumulator. Then we will OR the content of A with 01 by using this instruction ORL A comma hash 01. Then we will save the result into the location 52H. Then we will load the number 23 H again into the accumulator and we will end the content of the accumulator with 01 by using this instruction AML A comma hash 01H. Then we will save the result into the location 53 hexadecimal. Then we will again load the number into the accumulator and then we will make an XOR operation of A with 01 by using this instruction XRL A comma hash 01H and then we will save the result into the location 54H. So when you type this program by using any 8051 simulator into the text editor as shown in this window, if it is correctly typed and when you run it, then you will get the result that in the location 52H, you will get the result 23H, 53, you will get 01H, and in 54, you will get the result 22. So on, in this window, you can easily observe that you are getting the corresponding results at the respective memory locations. 
so thank you friends for giving the session hopefully now you have understood and you are now able to write some assembly language programs for the microcontroller unit 8051 thank you all for giving the session